Hello, my name is Tasfia Bari. I'm a PhD student at Eastern Michigan University in Ypsilanti, Michigan, and in the United States of America. Today I'll be presenting on the impact of intrusion detection systems upon healthcare environments. This presentation is based upon a research review that I have conducted over the past few months under the supervision and advisorship of Dr. Mutar Abdul Kibash, who is also at Eastern Michigan University. To provide some background information, technology has become an essential aspect of various areas of healthcare throughout our globe. We've observed this more recently with the COVID-19 pandemic. Technology has become an essential attribute of emergency medicine, telehealth, and pharmaceutical research and development. Its presence can be observed in various formats of healthcare technology, and more specifically in healthcare information technology, also known as HIT. While unexpected circumstances such as natural disasters and global pandemics, such as COVID-19, have increased our need for such technologies and integrating it within our daily use of healthcare. It is also a vital aspect of healthcare which we need to integrate moving forward, especially in making healthcare more accessible to various individuals throughout our globe. This is a contribution which impacts both patients and healthcare providers, regardless of what type of healthcare they are providing. Changes in different areas of biology as well as natural disasters have raised interest in technology adoption efforts. However, there are stipulations involved. Technology brings forth an additional expense which many areas of the globe are not ready to accommodate. In addition to this, integrating technology into healthcare and vital efforts such as emergency medicine and research and development also increases a risk of malware, phishing, and denial of service attacks, also known as DDoS. It also allows hackers and third parties seeking to obtain such important information, especially those which pertain to a patient's identity, um, the ability to gain their information and exploit it for their own use and gain. We saw this last year, last fall actually, in Germany as a ransomware attack resulted in 30 hospital servers being shut down. This resulted in emergency rooms being shut down completely and having patients be redistributed to 10 local hospitals within that area. With similar occurrences and protocols as physical attacks and natural disasters, the hospital had to delegate their patients to other areas and other facilities because they were unable to use certain technologies within their own facility. This attack itself was actually a mistake. The hacker themselves was identified by local police and was apologetic to the extent where they provided the reversal code to retract the virus. Nevertheless, this resulted in at least one death due to the discrepancies in treatment in the emergency room setting. And this simply occurred because of the context and the setting. In addition to this, other digital entities have also been attacked in recent history. Last fall, we also saw that a popular book retailer, Barnes & Noble, was also the victim of a viral attack. Last fall, hackers sent out a virus to obtain customer data from their popular Nook enterprise. This enterprise specifically is their digital entity, which allows customers to gain PDF manuscripts and books to read through their Kindle or Nook devices. With the attack initially being in a digital realm, uh, the virus and the hackers waited until the weekend to purposely enter the Barnes & Noble store locations in order to gain customer information pertaining to their credit cards and um, identity. So like I mentioned, they were specifically attacked on the weekend because they knew that Barnes & Nobles had less staff and therefore it would go unnoticed or at least delay the notice. Um, the hackers obtained an undisclosed 
largest amount of customer pain and information, and their servers were easily attacked due to the CVE 2019-115110 vulnerability, which is um, an anomaly that has been commonly observed within false VPN servers that um, could have been preemptively addressed. However, um, the company itself was not aware and had not addressed it prior to this incident. So within the United States, we specifically have legal protections pertaining to the viability and security of healthcare information. With this in mind, we have two specific um, acts that protect our healthcare information. First, um, the first one is HIPAA, which is considered to be the Health Information Portability and Accountability Act. It was established in 1996, and it protects the autonomy and civil liberties of patients seeking treatment in any healthcare setting within the United States. HIPAA is known for three major components, administrative security, technical security, and physical security. And for those working in clinical or healthcare atmospheres within the United States, um, when dealing with patient data, we are told to utilize the 3P rule. So three formats of personal information, whether that be their name or part of their name, their physical identity depicted through an image of any sort, as well as anything referencing and tracing their ID. The other law, high tech, which is known as the Health Information Technology for Economic and Clinical Health Act, um, was established at least 10 years after HIPAA. It was kind of a follow-up to HIPAA, and it was established in 2009 after the Hurricane Katrina natural disaster, which led to um, over thousands and thousands of individuals in New Orleans, Louisiana, Louisiana being displaced from their homes, as well as losing their medical records in the process. Healthcare personnel noticed that with patients losing their health records, they were unable to obtain proper treatment, as well as um, adequate and rapid treatment as needed, especially in those endangered areas. The overall goal of high tech was to promote health information technology adoption and usage amongst, amongst healthcare practitioners and users such as patients to consolidate patient information and make healthcare practices more accessible throughout the nation. The aftermath of Hurricane Katrina encouraged health information technology adoption, which also pushed the need for electronic health records. So this also takes away some of the stress from the patients as well. So here we have a diagram. Um, it kind of explains the four primary levels of health information technology and which aspects are combined within the overall subject. So at large, we see health information technology. So examples of this include the EPIC systems that many clinical settings use, Cerner and NextGen. So these can often be cloud-based apparatuses. Next, we have electronic health records, also known as EHR. And these are observed as patient IDs converging with cloud-based systems. So health information technology encompasses EHR. Afterwards, we have physical devices. These are what we see in our hospital and our doctor's office as we walk in. We see pagers, we see imaging tools, um, our heartbeat monitors. There are various things that collect data and then they send it as EHR to our health information technology devices. And then um, inside all of that, we have technology adoption efforts, which includes our basic consent to treatment within technology usage. If patients do not consent to the usage of such technologies, um, hospitals will have to work with essentially what they are provided and go with the information that they do have. So on one hand, the more information the patients do provide um, physicians and the healthcare providers, the more information can benefit them moving forward, but at the same time, the more susceptible they are to losing their information or possibly having it compromised. 
processes through a management system. It's essentially a gatekeeper. So IDS communication signals can be anticipated by wireless technology devices, like I mentioned in my previous slide, and they communicate with shared systems and networks. Throughout the hospital, depending on the size of the campus, as well as the administration overall. Primarily observed in larger healthcare settings, such as hospital campuses and clinical groups, um, IDS can provide a cloud based framework or a system which consolidates different healthcare efforts. So it unites providers and various teams across systems. So if you go into the emergency room, your emergency room attending physician can easily share or obtain data collected by your cardiologist from a previous visit, thus making the overall stay and visit more efficient. It reduces the patient's digital footprint while condensing their health records and information. So like we saw in our diagram, we have health information technology, but this is taking the EHR aspect and condensing it so that you don't have multiple scans, or you don't have to get another x-ray every time you go in. They can just check the one you had a month ago based on your history and your records and your diagnosis. So this allows for easy access and review and expedites treatment processes compared to previous efforts. So the data set impact. Different authors have suggested their own individualized approach towards data set utilization and healthcare IDS, which best fits their methods and their healthcare settings that they observed within their own studies. Given that this was a research review, we did um, review multiple different settings and different um, current research studies that were made available to us. But more specifically, we looked into a specific data set utilized by the majority of different researchers. And we'll go into that in a little bit. Otherwise, um, authors utilize data sets which, depending upon their patient biometric data and that work matrix to identify patterns and deficits within their IDS. Other authors utilize or refer to larger data sets which follow techniques common in common practices observed in data mining procedures. So they were more of a proactive approach towards information storage. Overall, this was beneficial to understand techniques necessary for networks and servers catering to larger hospital and healthcare information exchange systems. So going into specifics, the KDD99 data set took specific techniques which did an anomaly detection based on information exchange traffic patterns um, and compared it to other data sets. The KDD99 data set in particular is considered to be one of the most widely utilized data sets in, in intrusion detection techniques. The research review process that we conducted suggested that practices which utilize the KDD99 data set and neural networking techniques yielded con consistent outcomes in information assurance practices across multiple healthcare settings and studies. So we really looked at a global, um, a global review of different research studies that were made available to us. We weren't focusing specifically on the United States or specifically on Australia. It was really a global effort, therefore, um, each healthcare setting varied based on the location, setting, and service they, they provided. Next, we have a table which kind of summarizes the different studies that we specifically observed in comparison to which ones used the KDD99 data set, and then which ones specifically used neural networking benefits, and then which one used both. And as we see, those that refer to the KDD99 data set we're more inclined to use both. So in conclusion, the review suggested that the newfound methods of regulating and reviewing information were better regulated and ensured through combinative approaches, as we saw in the last slide. So those which utilized both the KDD99 data set and neural networking efforts um, had a better approach towards their intrusion detection systems which meant that um, there was a more diversified approach towards yielding better anomaly detection across multiple systems and networks. With combinative efforts in neural networking um, and the KDD99 data set, the samples ultimately suggested positive outcomes. 
however 